Let's explore how to solve number 15 with a super short and slick solution. Let B be the set of rectangular prisms with the volume 23. So if volume is 23, we just say x, y, z is 23. Surface area 54. So x, y plus x, z plus y, z is 54. And okay, so we're basically saying, suppose the r is the least possible radius that can fit any element inside of it. So basically amongst all rectangular prisms, so let's just consider any one given rectangular prism, right? For this rectangular prism, what is this radius going to be? For just this rectangular prism, what's the minim minimum radius? Well, notice that it's just equal to the space diagonal all over 2. The space diagonal, you divide that 2, you get r and r. So effectively, we're trying to say r equals square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared all over 2. Let's square both sides. We get 4r squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. We're basically trying to find minimum value of r squared, which is the same thing as finding the minimum of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, and then we'll divide by 4. So notice it's, it's a super common thing that x plus y plus z squared is this thingy plus 2 times xy plus yz plus xz. So if we're trying to maximize this quantity, notice that this is fixed, right? This thing we know is, by the way, this should actually be 27 because surface area is 2 times this. So we know 2 times that is 54. So this is equal to 27. So this is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus 54. So we're trying to find the minimum value of x plus y plus z because that will allow us to find the minimum of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So now this problem effectively reduces to, given these two equations, let's move that down, find the maximum value of x plus y plus z. And this feels like an inequalities type of thing, right? You know, you're trying to find the maximum, so generally it's going to be some sort of inequality type solution. So for over here, let's just substitute z. Let's get rid of a variable. Let's make things a little bit easier. So based on this first equation, we get z is 23 over xy. And then we plug it in, bottom, we get xy plus xz, and xz is just 23 over y, plus yz, and yz is just 23 over x. That's 27. So we have this is equal to 27. Now, wh what are we trying to do here? We're trying to maximize x plus y plus z. And x plus y plus z, well, we'll worry about that later. But the, maybe you can write it out if you want to. But x plus y plus z is now just this, right? In terms of just x and y. So given this, maximize this. That's basically the core of the problem. And there's like a really cool trick that you can use here. And that is the maximum generally occurs when x equals to y. And I'm not going to prove it rigorously here because it's very hard to have time to do that on Amy. But I'll sort of give you an intuitive explanation about why this might be true. So let's say we have like, let's just try and plot it out a little bit. Something like this. x and y are symmetric, clearly, right? So x and the midpoint, the symmetry point, is when x equals y. So let's say this is the point when x equals y. This is not like a graphing on the plane, this is just like a simple visualization. Let's say x greater than y is here, and let's say y greater than x is here. So it's symmetric on both sides, just because of the symmetry of the variables. So that's why generally the maximum value will probably occur at x equals y. But you might be like, huh, what if it's symmetric, but then it goes upwards on both sides? Huh. If it goes upwards on both sides, well, take a look. Now the maximum is completely unbounded. It can just grow forever. So there's not going to be a maximum. It's just going to be infinite, which is not what we want either. So clearly this case is impossible. So we know that the maximum must occur when x equals y. And I know this is not super rigorous, but the point is, generally in these types of problems, maximum occurs when x equals y. So we plug in x equals y. We get x squared plus 46 over x is 27. Now we multiply by x, so we get x cubed 
minus 27x plus 46 is 0. And we just factor this. We get, it's pretty simple. You just test integer roots. 2 is a root. And we plug in 2. We get x minus 2. And then we also have to multiply by another quadratic, which I believe is x squared minus plus... 2x plus 20 minus 23, something like this. Yeah, this should be right. Yeah. So then we have this. We have a bunch of possibilities, right? x can be equal to 2 and therefore y as well. And then we have this. And if you look at the quadratic formula, it's like some ugly irrational is the point here. So first, let's just try x equals 2, and maybe we'll come back to this if we need to. So x equals 2, then therefore x is 2, y is 2, and then z is therefore 23 over 4. So their sum is 2 plus 2 plus 23 over 4, and that is equal to, that's 8 over 4 plus 8 over 4 plus 39, plus 23 over 4 plus 39 over 4. That's the sum of x plus y plus z. And then we can solve for x later. But now let's take a look at these irrational roots. Now the question is, if if this was not the Amy, if it's not the Amy, and you wanted to be hundred percent sure, would you have to test th these irrational roots? Maybe you can ignore the minus one because that's just negative and that's not possible. But the, would we have to test this root? And the answer is yes, but in this case we don't have to. Why? Because then we realize this sum is going to become some really ugly irrational, and if this sum is some really ugly irrational, then so is this quantity here. And take a look, our answer format is given to be rational, so we know that can't be it. So I know this is not like 100% sure you can't verify this, but generally, you know, it's not going to be this kind of ugly irrational, right? It's not possible to have this of an ugly irrational for this. You plug it in, and somehow it's just going to become irrational at the end. So we can just assume, okay, x equals 2 is going to be the solution that we want to find based on what the problem. So 2 plus 2 plus 23 over 4, 39 over 4. That's sum. And now we just plug it in here, right? This becomes 39 over 4 squared. So 39 over 4 squared. And if you know the squares trick from a video I made a long time ago, it's just easy to find 1521 over 16. And now we subtract and now we subtract 54. So we have 1521 minus or over 16 minus 54. That's equal to this. And this is what's 54 times 15? That's 540 plus. 540 plus 324 is 864, so 1521 minus 864 over 16, and that becomes 136,521, so that's 657 over 16. But be careful, we're trying to find r squared, not this, so we divide by 4. So r squared is 657 over 64, and that gives an answer of 721, which is the final answer for this problem. A cool problem with some nice meta-solving techniques here. One of them was letting x equals y, seeing that that's probably going to be the maximum. And the other was realizing this rational root is never going to make it to a rational answer. So we found out that 721 works. I hope you enjoyed this video.